September the 24th, 2006, where were you? I was sitting on a bench on Light Supply in Amsterdam and I was waiting to have dinner with a friend. Yeah. And um, somebody sat down next to me and asked me what time it was. So, and there was a clock right in front of us. So I know that we met at 10 to 7, uh, the exact time. And I thought oh. it was a bit cheesy of him to ask me what time it was when there was a clock right there. And what did he look like? He looked, I could, I could straight away, I could see that he was homeless. Yeah. because he was very dirty and um, his hair, and he, his beard was bigger then and was very dirty and his hand, fingernails. And he was also holding a briefcase, which I thought only crazy people did. Right. Um, and then later on I found out that's where he held his sleeping bag and his beer cans, the cans of beer. And, but we started chatting and I also noticed that he had the most beautiful brown eyes I'd ever seen. <laughs> and he just made me laugh straight away. So you chatted, I think your friend was about 10 minutes late. So you had about sort of this 10 minutes together. What were your first impressions of Emmy? What made you go and talk to her that day? I was, I was just standing around lights a plane uh, and I seen this beautiful woman sit on a bench by herself and she just felt so comfortable by herself. Like there was no, she wasn't, it didn't look like she was waiting for anybody. She was just super content just sitting there with a smile on her face. And yeah. I decided I, I have to go and speak with this woman. So how, how did you end up living under a bush? It was, it was basically a European backpacking trip that had just gone a little bit too far. Right. Um, I'd run out of money earlier than I expected to, um, but I still had, uh, I, I, hadn't done, I hadn't done everything I wanted to do during the trip. Mm. So I just said, well, I'll do it without any money because you can do quite a lot of things without uh, especially then, just And then gradually the wheels fell off. Yeah, the wheels fell off and I mean the, the, the alcoholism sort of kicked yeah, in heavy yeah. and um, it, it, it was such a gradual turn that all of a sudden one day I noticed, I realized like, oh my God, I'm a homeless yeah. alcoholic. And uh, it, yeah, it started... Well, that, that first bench meeting was lovely and there was a click and there was spark and there was yep. electricity and so you you were about to your friend arrived and you got up to go and then turned around and uh, and said you i'm gonna meet you again <laughs> yeah I, ba I basically just told her to be at the same bench uh was it no eight? his exact words were saturday three o'clock the same bench and he just walked off uh. and i was like what? <laughs> and, and, and this, so you had a few days really to think about what had happened. I had, a, I had five days, yeah, this five was on a days. Sunday mm. and uh, I just couldn't get him out of my mind. I, and it just didn't make sense that somebody visibly homeless could be so confident, you know, and like, because I was single and I would date loads of guys and they were always like, yeah, maybe I'll call you, maybe I won't. And there's this homeless guy just telling me, you know, to be back on this bed. And you had obviously no way of contacting him whatsoever. I had no way of contacting him, yeah. But you went, and you went back there five days later, I and did. he was late. He was late, he was late. <laughs> and I felt like such a fool, and I was going to call my sister and go, he didn't turn up. And uh, he turned up 20 minutes late on a little kid's bike, of all things. And we spent the day together, and unfortunately, he was quite smelly as well. And I really wanted to kiss him on that first date, yeah. but I didn't know if I could because mm. of his smell. Well, you said you had, the, you said you had <laughs> a wonderful a day and a picnic and it was fabulous, but <laughs> then the th you were living in Vienna at the okay. time and yep. up comes the, 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 the moment where you've got to go. Yeah. You have to go back. He's got no means to contact you, but you gave him your number. I did. And mm. then you went back to Vienna. And I didn't know if I was ever going to see him again. I mean, I was, I hoped I would, uh, and I couldn't stop thinking about him. And then three weeks later, I just turned 30. And um, I just get a phone call on a Monday morning, and it was just Vic saying, I'm here now. And he'd followed me to Vienna, and we've been together ever since. How did you get to Vienna? I just took the train. <laughs> well, how does a homeless person afford to take the train? Uh, I mean, you can, you can scrounge up a few euros here and there. I was quite proficient at doing that eventually. Yeah. But I you were in prison uh, during the time. Well, was not what... in prison. <laughs> I'd been arrested for stealing a chicken. And it was on, it was on a Friday <laughs> afternoon, and they're not going to let out anyone till Monday because the whole magistrate or the, mm. the powers that be were not... We're not home at the moment, so yeah. I have Ocean two love days. Is never a smooth one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but somehow, I mean, I, I got on quite well with the people there. They saw I was just... So life begins then. So you, like you said, from that day, you've, you've not been separated. Um, you have encouraged one another this... I mean, you've got six-year-old twins, but, but something that was really important, you encouraged him to go back into further education and, mm -hmm. and kind of just find his own path. Yeah. I, yeah. I, it was very important to me because I could tell how intelligent he was and he's just an amazing man that it would be a waste if he didn't educate himself further. And luckily I managed to convince you and now you're a, he's and a mechanical I'm engineer. I'm glad you did. <laughs> yes. 
And, and you uh, smell great. Yeah. You, exactly. Thank you. Showers every day oh. now. <laughs> um, you got married. So you got married in a castle. We married in yeah. a castle. Yeah. I mean, Which that is the isn't it? Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and so, what did the what did the children think of the story? How much have you told them? We've told them everything. We told them everything that happened. Mm, yeah. I, I don't. I don't think they grasped the whole concept of the, like the social aspects of, of the whole thing. Yeah. Mm. They just they, thought it was quite funny that I lived in the bush, like a yeah. they, they like, like some book. sort of. Daddy lives in a bush. Yeah, uh, that's, that's yeah. their title that's for it. it. Well, this is uh, this is the book, um, uh, uh, How to Fall in Love with a Man Who Lives in a Bush. Uh, so it's all there in the title, uh, but but it, 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 quite a lot of it is, is fiction. Uh, but your story is so extraordinary. Why didn't you write it factually? Um, well, as a as a writer, I, I needed to make the story a bit better and a bit more exciting. So I, I changed a few details just to speed it up. So in the book, we meet in Vienna. We don't meet in Amsterdam. Uh, but it's a real feel-good book, and I just noticed how happy our story made people. Yeah. So I hope this book will also make people feel really good and happy. And and a really lovely, strong message throughout the whole thing of, of just not to judge anybody. Yeah. Absolutely.